Hi folks and welcome to Biker's Carriage 101. This week I'm going to show you how to open up one of these babies. It's a Harley Davidson Speedo. It's going to be the same thing for a big twin or a sportster. In other words, these four and a half inch or the smaller one. It's very easy to open up. You know, it might be that your glass is broken, that it's uh, tarnished or whatnot, you know, or you want to change the dial face for something cooler that you found on the market. Like us here in Spain, what we do is we change the uh, dials from miles to kilometers with a new dial face that you can find on the market. You can find them either in silver or in black, okay? And what tools you're going to use for this, and you guys are going to laugh your ass off on this one, you're going to go off to your local Chinese import store, you're going to get yourself one of these funky ass kits. <laughs> they look like toys, don't you? Don't they? What you need are these two, what you're going to use are these two, these two uh, uh, nail pullers or whatever they call them. They call them nail pullers, whatever. And these little funky ass looking uh, hammers to reclose the can again. They're going to uh, they're, they're going to help out a lot. And if you're a cheap ass like me, well, I'm not a cheap ass anymore. I got one of these. You can always use a flathead screwdriver and do the same job. It's not going to be as easy, but you can still do it that way. So hang on in there. Don't go away. We're going to get started right away. Okay folks, so here we are. We've got our Speedo ready. We've chosen the flat surface. We've cushioned it with a, with a towel under, under, this, uh, under this cardboard. I've chosen this green cardboard so you can see cl clearly what I'm doing here. Okay, so we're going to use our uh, pin puller or nail puller. And what we're going to do is we're going to lean against the side of the, of the Speedo. Be careful, the Speedo material is, pla is plastic. It's uh, rather rigid. It won't give much and if you exercise too much pressure, What's going to happen, folks, is that you're going to crack this case. If you crack this case, okay, well, water will seep in through there. All right, so you want to be careful. You can't, you cannot, you cannot, okay, lift the slip in one single go. So what's going to happen is that you, it will give a little bit every time that you come around. And it's going to take about somewhere between five and seven turns, okay. Um, of lifting this uh, lip ever so slightly every time okay and you want to keep on at it okay be patient don't try to don't try to rush this whoops sorry about that okay you can all if you don't have one of these tools okay that we've purchased at our uh, Chinese import outlet what you can do is to use a flathead screwdriver I don't like using the uh, the flathead screwdriver particularly. Okay, I will try. Uh, I will try to show you why. What happens is that uh, as you go around, you see what happens is that it tends, since it's got an angle right here, it tends to slip. Every time it slips, it sort of like cuts the bezel a little bit. It lifts it up in that particular particular spot. Okay, and once you try, once you come back to seal uh, to seal again uh, this uh, this bezel what will happen is that little that little slip that little crack okay it's going to stand out a little bit proud you won't be able to notice it maybe you won't be able i don't know okay but that little crack it's going to be a little bit, a little bit of a nuisance so i've discarded the uh, flathead screwdriver in favor of a nail puller of this sort okay so we've done about four uh, or five turns doing this okay doing this work around bringing the uh, the edge of the bezel outward and now as a fun the, the final stage folks is going to be to introduce the tip of your tool here between the bezel and the edge of the speedometer case okay 
Well, like I said before, you got to be very careful with this speedometer case. It's made out of plastic. It's a little bit brittle. The idea here is to bring the edge of the chrome bezel to the exact diameter of the edge of the case, the, the plastic case, okay? And that's going to that's going to allow you to actually pull out the bezel without much of a hassle. Just take your time. Just go around, bring, introduce your tool, okay? Put your tool between the edge of the, uh, the uh, plastic case and the metal bezel. Be careful with the edge of the bezel. It's almost razor sharp, okay? And it will cut you if you don't take care. Okay, so we're going to continue like this all the way until it comes to a point where you can actually introduce, there you go, your tool between the bezel, the, uh, the case edge and the, be the, the uh, uh, bezel edge. And what's going to happen, it's going to pop right out. So we're, here we go. Now we've got our speedometer open, okay, and that's a question of uh, pulling out the needle. Okay, so we got our speedo all. Uh, um, glass off, okay, if the problem that you have is that your glass is broken and the only thing that you want to do is change the glass, okay, what you should do is pop this plastic, rigid plastic seal right out. Be careful not to cut yourself with a broken glass. Take it apart, put in the new glass, put in this black uh, seal of this black pla plastic back on again okay reclose it and fall and continue with the uh, with the end of this tutorial okay now if what you what you want to do is change the dial face your best ally here are get ready for this one two forks <laughs> yep it's as simple as that two forks now pull out this needle the last thing that you want to do here, folks, is to bend the shaft, okay? Underneath, this, this needle is connected directly to a, to a, a small, tiny servo uh, mechanism right behind the, uh, the dial, the dial face, okay? It's rather delicate, okay? If you try to pull them out, it's more than likely that what you, what's going to happen is you're going to bend that dial, that shaft, or even damage the servo in there. So you do want to be careful and then pull out the needle using some sort of tool that will pull out equally from both sides. Now the best thing for this is using a pair of forks, just put them like so and using the other end of the fork, okay, this end, these are fancy forks aren't they folks, using the other end just do a uh, uh, there, there's a lot of force that you're going to apply, okay, so be very, be rather delicate with this, okay, and what you want to do is apply equal force to each fork, and what's going to happen is that the needle will, sh uh, will, will pull out softly, okay, the, do, do be gentle, okay, this is the most delicate part of this entire, uh, of this entire operation, so you do want to be, you, you do want to take your time and make absolutely sure you know and you feel s secure about what you're doing here, okay. Now, as you can see, we've pulled it out. Okay, it popped out right at the last uh, at the last second. Okay, it, this speedo in particular took a little bit more force than any other of the others that I've done so far. Okay, don't be afraid. Be gentle, but be firm. Okay, it, it doesn't take a, any yanking or anything like that. It takes a small amount of force, but uh, constant. And, uh, and, and be gentle, okay? You do not want to bend this central shaft. You can see it right there, okay? That is connected to that small servo. Now sometimes what happens is that this needle that you can see here, okay, that axle that you can see in there, that, uh, okay, that comes out with the pointer, 
it comes attached to this end. It really doesn't make any difference, does it? Okay, as long as you don't bend it, you'll be okay. So be very careful with this, okay? This is the most critical part of the entire disassembly. So we've got the pointer out. So what we want to do now is again, using our nail puller, our pin puller, what we're going to do is being very careful not to touch the shaft is we're going to introduce it here, okay? Because what we want to do is we want to get this dial face out. The dial face is attached to a back support, okay? That centers it and keeps it into place because actually the dial face is very thin. It's about half a, it's about 0.75 millimeter, millimeters thick, okay? So what we know, want to do now is just from the center, just pull outwards, being very careful not to damage, not to touch the central shaft, okay? We can use this tool or you can use any other tool that's uh, L-shaped and introduce it into there and just pull, okay? So what we want to do now is get this uh, dial face off of its back support, okay? We want to do this a little bit careful if you want to keep the original dial face for whatever reason, okay? So your best uh, tool for this uh, part is an X-Acto knife or a scalpel. I'm using a scalpel that, I've got, that I regularly use and what you want to do is find the edge, okay? Find that edge and uh, carefully just uh, start going around your dial face. Go slow on this, okay? The glue is not that strong. I think it's contact glue of some sorts, okay? What you want to do is just go around and around and every little, every time you, go in a, you want to go in a little bit deeper, okay? You have it. We've managed to take apart the uh, dial face from its back support without we haven't damaged the dial face so we can still use this further down the road if we want to retrofit it for some reason or another okay there you go we're going to place this to one side we're going to clean the back support as best as we can that we can we want to get all this glue off because what i found is that if you use if you leave any of this uh, residue glued residue behind, what will happen is that it's more than likely going to react with the new dial face that you're going to put, okay? And what's going to happen is going to pop right up, okay? So you do want to get rid of all this. The best option here is alcohol uh, diluted with a 50% a dilution of alcohol and acetone. Do not use acetone 100% because what will happen is that you're more than likely going to damage the plastic of the backs. We are working with our 50% solution, alcohol acetone solution. You want to uh, dampen, dampen uh, the surface as much as possible to get the uh, glue residue well soaked in your uh, cleaning solution. And what you will notice is that slowly it starts to uh, it starts to degrade, it starts to peel away very easily. But this is the most tedious, shitty job, part of the job, okay? Just keep at it. It's gonna take about half an hour to get this uh, entire thing done. Far more than it's gonna take you to open this uh, speed up. So we've gotten our back plate all cleaned up. There's no glue residue left. We've got it all dried up as well, cleaned it with so uh, soap and water. Tried it using a hair dryer. The last thing you know, what you wanna do is leave any water behind on in these nicks and crannies that might affect the electronics of the speedometer all right now you're ready to place your new dial face it only takes a couple of drops of uh, any make of super glue don't go crazy about it just one or two drops will keep your dial face in okay, place so as you notice there are some notches here on this back plate there you go you see so what you want to do is you want to align the di your dial face with these notches. In this notches. case, we're going to place a new one in kilometers. It's been rescaled in kilometers. You can use, uh, you, uh, obviously, uh, it could be that you want to do uh, to do uh, this entire tutorial just to change the dial face to something cool that you've designed or found in the market. Okay. Now, what we have to do is 
reassemble everything and zero in our needle, our pointer. Okay folks, so here we are back at our motorcycle. What we're going to do is we're going to connect our speedometer to the motorcycle. Okay. And we, what we want to do here is we want to let the electronics of the motorcycle reset our, our, our uh, speedometer servo. Okay. So we're going to turn on the ignition. And as you heard, it reset right now. So we know right now that the servo is sitting at zero. So we want, we want to introduce our needle very carefully and delicately, just a little bit, okay, at the zero position. There you go. So we now know that the needle is at the zero marker. Turn off the ignition. And if you turn it on again, what will happen is that it will reset and it should be at zero. There you go. So remember that this needle is only slightly pushed in. Now that we know that it's sitting at zero, we can push it, drive it in all the way. It doesn't take much, okay? Don't go crazy about it. Just drive it in until you feel some resistance and that's it. So what, what we want to do now is uh, we want to marry these, both of these parts, the uh, bezel with our uh, glass cleaned or, or replaced if uh, what happened is that you broke it. Okay, and uh, slightly pressing using a circular, there you go, motion. I want to put everything back together. Now, if what you find is that the uh, bezel edge is crimped uh, too much, just take, a, take a, a little plier like this, okay, and just straighten it out a little bit before you uh, make these, both of these parts together, okay? And that's going to help out a lot, okay? What you should do is just grab your little plier and just pull back on it a little bit, okay, to straighten out the, uh, the uh, bezel edge. Okay, so using one of these uh, small hammers that came with our uh, tool set, with the tool set that we bought our, uh, at our uh, local Chinese import market, what we're going to do is we are going to recrimp this bezel, okay, back into place. Now, we don't want to use any silicon sealant or any crazy ass shit like that, okay? Because you have to let the air that's inside your speedometer, you have to let it breathe. You have to let the speedometer breathe. Otherwise, it's just going to fog up, okay? If you seal it completely, the uh, difference between the outside temperature and the inside temperature, the outside humidity and the inside humidity is going to cause the air inside your speedometer to fog out the inside of the glass. Okay, that's simple enough. Okay, you just grab your little hammer and hammer your merry way away. Simple as that. And just continue like so until you finish it. Don't go crazy about it, you know, banging up the crap out of it or whatnot. Just go easy and slowly, okay? Be gentle with it. And slowly you will start to notice this edge is going to crimp back. Okay? You can also use a bench vise. Okay? And what you would do is you would play, you would place the, uh, you would place uh, your nylon pads on your, uh, on, on, the, on the faces of the, of, the, of the vise. Okay? And just crimp it. Crimp the uh, bezel back into place using the vise, the bench vise. But not all of you guys have a bench vise, now do you? So, I'm going to continue with this, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're all done, finished here. Okay, this is a different speedometer than the one that we started out, okay? This is a little bit more dirty. The uh, previous owner, what he did is he tried, he tried to seal this speedometer, okay? And what happened was it was fogging out. Okay, so if I've opened it and took, uh, taken out all the silic silicon sealant that he used, okay, that's a dumb idea. People do not do that. It's not, and it's not necessary. Good. Everything seems to be working fine. It uh, resets to zero, so we've done our, uh, our job correctly. What we're going to do is going to take her out for a spin to make absolutely sure that everything is working. 
Okay, so we've changed the dial face on our speedometer on a Harley Davidson. Not too difficult, it's a little bit tedious to get the uh, glue off the backing plate. Uh, a little bit delicate not to uh, bend the uh, needle shaft and whatnot, but fairly easy. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you wish, and hope to see you next time. Try safe. Bye.